Crime and Punishment, Housing Market, Real Estate, Recession, Economy, and Brett Kavanaugh Murder Attempt. That's what we're talking about today here at Relevant Rants. Welcome to the show. Thank you for joining us here with uh, Tom, Kyle, and Scott. Excited to be talking to you guys about all of these things. And, uh, you know, we, we, we've been talking about the economy. We've been talking about all this stuff, the, the housing market, and you're right on the pulse of that, Kyle. Well, everybody thinks that because uh, I've, you know, I'm a realtor and I have a real estate team that I have all the answers. <laughs> and I want to say that don't? I don't. Oh, <laughs> I wish. Uh, well, the thing that is, makes you I, an economist, no? Right. <laughs> so I, I do have a lot of insight, and it's interesting because when I see headlines come across, I, I can see I'm like, okay, well, that without context doesn't matter. That without context, like right now, they're saying that you know interest uh, or mortgage loan applications are the lowest they've been in 20 years for refinance. Yeah, you're right, but not in general. In general, they're the lowest they've been in like two years. So context is important of course context no one's gonna is always re- important yeah no one's going to refi right now when rates are five percent when the last however many years they've been three, three and four right, that's just common sense but right. that doesn't mean something negative necessarily as it relates to the housing market so and, and everybody says and, and so you hear the lumber prices right now are going back down well do you remember they were really inflated <laughs> yeah so maybe they should come down a little <clears throat> so should. and with that builders are slowing down mm-hmm. might be a good thing well i I take that back. Builders do need to keep building. We do need to incentivize that because what we had happen in the 2007 crash, we had a metric ton of homes. In fact, almost as many avail- almost as many homes as we have now, actually we have 3 million fewer homes now than we did in 2007. Okay. The difference is now we have 14 million more households to fill. So, so what I'm trying to say is that we have a lot more people that need homes and a lot fewer homes right now. Right. So we need the new construction. We need new homes. So there's still supply and demand right now. Oh gosh, yeah. If we look at that, demand and that's really, high. And that's oh really gosh, what yeah. controls the market. Right. It is. Yeah. Supply yeah. and demand. Yeah. So yeah. And, that's, and that brings the main point. You know, is the housing market going to crash? Well, I'm going to tell you, I feel it. I don't feel it crashing. I feel it taking a hit. And I'm feeling in my business, literally, we have homes on the market. And they're just not moving as quick. If they're upward in our higher end uh, luxury market, they are kind of taking a little bit longer. We're having to do open houses. We're having to promote these properties. But one can argue that's a neutral market. It's giving buyers a fair chance. Okay, but as high as the market's been, and now you're saying it's neutral, does that it's at still least a seller's tell- market? Okay, well, but and it's that getting neutral. Be my second yeah. question: Does that mean we're slowly at mm-hmm. least coming to this middle ground when we've been real high? Right. You know when you're hiking a mountain, and you get to the point where like it levels off, and you're like, "Oh man, I'll take this over that steep part." Right. That's it. Like so. So you're saying it could still spike up again i think it does it plateau? oh no i th- i think overall year over year we continue to go up for the next foreseeable f- years ahead of us so okay if you're a home buyer out there or okay. even a real estate investor if you're a young home buyer do you want to still buy right now is it is it a worthy investment i'm buying every property that i could get a you hold can. of yeah and, and so if you're an investor yeah. regardless of what the price is you still think it's a good time to buy i do okay i do just because right now there's a lot of shock in the market when people it's almost like that you that you get a, a little bit of a gut punch and then you realize, wait, we're okay. When people realize 5 and 6% is not a bad interest rate overall and you can right. still afford it, they're going to wish they would have bought because then once people get numb to that or used to that, it's their new norm, prices will then start going back up again. Okay. Well, I, I, I'm a guy that bought at 13.5% back in 1990. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I so go back you, to the supply heard, and demand. If you heard five, six percent to you, it's a no brainer. Well, that was yeah. I'm just saying it's supply and demand. If you're out there and you need a home, you're gonna have to pay whatever you're gonna have to pay. And I remember paying thirteen and a half right. back in the nineties, early nineties. We become when I came accustomed back to, to the normal. Yeah. Five yeah. percent for you and I is low. Yes. But to these other people that have been living yeah. with the threes <laughs> and the three fives and right? Yeah. I mean I'm seeing my, my daughter's buying a house right now. She she goes, Should I walk in at five? I'm thinking, yes. So well, this yeah. is the biggest thing for me. This is probably one of the most important takeaways. Right now, you see a plethora of buyers that are saying, hey, we're going to hold off and wait for that 3% rate again. I think that's a mistake. I, I don't, agree. I don't, I don't know, think it's coming back. I don't yeah. know anybody who knows it's coming back soon. No. I'm not saying it will never come back. I'm saying if you're holding off in hopes that next year it's going to be 3 you're only going to pay more if, for if, house. If you want to use, Scott, my time frame, because we're, you know, back when the dinosaurs roamed the right. earth. Right. <laughs> you know, you know, Fred Flintstone you know, pushing the car. Yeah, so, so we're talking 90s. I'm paying 13 and a half. I refinanced about a couple of years ago at two. Right. It's three. Mm-hmm. Um, 2.3. It's taken 20 some years to get there. Yeah. Right. You know, no, so, so, so if you're waiting for it to come back, hey, 
you know, you guys might and, see it. I don't yeah. know if Scott and I will see it. Well, and, we and, won't be in the home market, buying you're, market. You're walking right into what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Interest rates is crime and punishment. It can come and it can sting us hard. Yeah. Well, that's why I'm moving to Tennessee, because my money and my retirement is going to go farther. You well, know. I know I, on the real estate end, with that, on the real, with, yes. I know that's not where we're, but on the real estate end, I will tell you, it is hard. California, that's where we're at. It is hard to retire here. Our ta- every, yes. Just as a whole, it is harder to retire. Well, I, so I've already figured, doing what I've already doing. figured this out. My money doubles in Tennessee. Yep. Yeah. It Absolutely. doubles. It is. So. so what do you got for us, Tom? Yeah, you know what I, I, I've got? And I know, Scott, I won't look at you when I do this because you're a defense attorney. But I, I think there's got to be a point that we're tired of soft selling some of these criminals that are committing crimes when they're out on probation. This broke my heart when this uh, young teenager, 16 years of age, we're finding this out, basically was high and he tried to run over a mom and a child, baby. And we're finding out, which is a terrible, you know, I think, and it's not an oversight. I mean, the dep- the uh, um, LA uh, Sheriff's Department said they were never consulted when the DA said they were consulted on this lenient sentence that's been given to this kid right. who was on probation. Mm. He was on probation for spiking a girl's drink in high school. Oh, okay. You know, so he was already on probation for a felony, and then he came, and the the, the woman testified that they her and her baby moved to the side of an alley, and he turned his wheels to come at him. Oh. And so, so, so you have this district attorney in L.A., and we're getting this a lot, I think. And I even think in Bakersfield, we're having to go along with the flow come somewhat because we just had a guy who got sentenced for three years. And he was on probation when he sold a car. Then he went to jail. They released him. Right. And he stole another car a few hours later. Right. So I'm just saying, I think we're getting at a point where, and I was, and I, I was a chaplain in the uh, um, California Corrections Department for a decade. Mm-hmm. So I love going in and ministering to the guys. But I like to think that it's more rehabilitation than it is punishment. But we got to come to a happy medium where this law, the, 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 district attorneys are starting to hold their feet to the fire. I'm encouraged about um, something I heard recently in relation to this, right? So I was listening uh, to a podcast um, just this morning and they were talking about how the the San Francisco DA got recalled because of his soft stance on crime. I think Gasson is in his second recall. Yes, he is. Second, I mean, not first. The people of L.A., that said the guy's not doing his job. Yeah, well, but, and they're looking at uh, a different mayor now because yeah, of the same reasons. Yeah, well, so, yeah, it's the mayor generally it's, that appoints the new DA. Yeah, so they're, so they're, they're moving in the right person. You know what? This is the one thing. And I remember having a, a law school professor tell me this. The law, for the most part, is just like real estate, is a pendulum. You know, you, you mm, to the certain sense. extent, you, you guess. Sense. Like right now, <clears throat> I think we have entered this period where, you know, the pendulum's over here and we're, the, the, the state, not necessarily the county, but the state is, a little more easy on drug offenses. They, they they are pushing rehab more than they want. And what happens, undoubtedly, is we get this this crime issue that's come up or a homeless issue, whatever it may be, if the underlying issues aren't dealt with. And as we have these laws lenient, listen, the taxpayers get frustrated. People in the public mm-hmm. get frustrated. And that pendulum slowly comes back down. And there's just like su- supply and demand in, in kind of a, a different angle. There's this, there's this equity, this equity of scale that happens where hey, it's time to start putting these guys away. I agree. Mm-hmm. And and what you said, honestly, Tom, if I could add real quickly, the cars versus, like, there was an injury to a human being, and they were on probation for... Injuring for, a human being. And yes, and, and you know, when, it's, when it is a drug offense only, when it's a property offense only, the courts will look at the totality of circumstances. When you're dealing with something like murder assaults you know someone getting hit while intoxicated which is clearly a danger to society courts they i I will tell you if people that are tough on are wanting tough on criminal and punishment we're lucky here because we have one of the da's yeah and i am on the other side but cindy zimmer is a tough tough party and she is a very good advocate She's been victims. on. She's been on our lunch break show, yeah. and she's coming back on. Yes, and I'm, if you haven't yeah, seen she it, she does a good job. Go and, see. and you know what? She she doesn't allow. I, I think she does her best to not allow the pendulum to affect her position. She's always grinding, and it's yeah. it's my job and other defense attorneys' job to advocate for our client, and we'll see how justice works out. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, I, I just think it's sad when you even get into the point where you know you're lo- looking at party lines. I'm the guy that says I want to 
have conversations with people who have all kinds of different opinions than I do. Mm -hmm. But I think when you take it, when they're actually trying to circumvent the system and come out and not even give you all the details, because obviously the DA in LA hid this from the sheriff's department. Yeah. The sheriff had the backbone, congratulations, to stick up and say, no, I was never consulted right. on that. You know, obviously the DA had to know that. I mean, that's not a secret, but he said it anyways. Right. He, can we just say he lied? Right. Mm. Yeah. You know, yeah. and then he comes Based out. Based on and, the facts we have. And, and then he sa it says that he's negligent that he didn't tell the public that this teenager was on probation for the before the hit and run. Yeah. I mean, it's, all, it's also like, hey, I'm trying to protect my position now because obviously I was wrong. Yeah. Somebody right. should just come up and say I made a mistake. I would be much more g willing to give a little grace if somebody would come up and say I made a mistake. Right. Yeah. And, you know, and I won't do it again. But the problem is they right. do it again. I'm sorry. Now, there's also issues with him being a juvenile when he was on probation, yes. it sounds like. I don't know how much of that. I know the DA would have known how much it's made public. I'm not sure if there's yeah. any rules there. But uh, regardless, the sheriffs are often contacted. The family of the victims or yeah. the victims are always contacted when a yeah. plea like that's going yeah. to and, and, and apparently from the article is they're very upset. Yeah, absolutely. That a leniency has been taken <clears throat> when it was obviously in the intent was there. To right. cause more bodily injury. You know, I don't yeah. know if I'm just like one of those weird paranoid guys, but that is a fear of mine. Like whenever you're walking and I'm just like, some rogue idiot could seriously just turn their I car agree. right now well, and it just devastate Oh, I've life. thought of that many I'm, times. I'm like, I well, watch well, those well, things. Well, That's this, why I always this, sit with this, my back to the this wall. Mother the said, <laughs> this mother said, as I saw it coming, we moved over, uh -huh. but then we saw the wheels turn to come into us. Ugh. I've, I've imagined scenarios like that, like, what would I do? I'd grab my kid and I'd just yes. throw her in well, the air. Well, you, know, you can see in this. Car comes this, and you this, jump over the car. This Something. Is a, this you know, is I've a, imagined hey, that. Guys, <laughs> this is a picture. I, yes, she's I on top of the hood and her baby's in between the um, car. And it's yeah. there's weirdos. And you know the other thing? He got is that okay caught, I put that picture up? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I mean, he we'll got the, caught. We'll put um, the article link on the. Um, yeah, and I have, I have some stats, too, that we can verify on my, my topic, just in case people want to dive in as well. But the other thing, too, you were saying – um is that you know he got his first offense was you know spiking a, a girl's girl drink okay but you don't just do that once it makes you wonder how many times has he done no, that i agree whenever yeah. you see those little crimes you're like is, what are the chances this was the very <laughs> yes. first time he yeah did that's the like first that. thing I, 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 agree. I, I agree i'm all about grace mm -hmm. i'm all about forgiveness but there has got to be a um you know a, a responsibility on the other side of this and then as a chaplain i'll go in and minister to these guys right mm -hmm. I, I i pastor ron and i tell a funny story i would go into wasco sometimes and the guy was coming for chaplain they go hi pastor tom right we heard a sermon from you f a few years ago <laughs> and you said if you don't listen you're going to be in prison so here we are, <laughs> here but, we are. but 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 it was it, we, you know but i would we would still go in to minister to these guys right. but they're just in a different circumstance yeah, they are. i have a real f a friend of all of ours joe and, raddatz and all and, still yeah. seeking god yeah, yeah. And 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 absolutely yeah. and I, I i visited joe in the uh, um prison and he was in a um a, a jumpsuit and he goes oh hey you know this is awkward and i go well not for me <laughs> So, well, I Speak, would say, yeah, speaking uh, of all of, well, yeah, speak, when I was going to try to transfer it over to you're saying it's beyond party line, it's conversation. Yeah. <clears throat> one of the things, well, one of the incidents that happened this week that I wanted to speak about was the murder plot against Judge uh, Supreme Court Justice Kavanaugh, mm -hmm. which it's a harrowing uh, circumstance. But the, the brief facts are there's a 26 year old California kid who's frustrated. He sees the leak of the Roe v. Wade mm -hmm. overturn. Um, he has issues with respect to Judge Kavanaugh being one of the justices that are going to vote against Second Amendment restrictions, right? And he says, you know what? I'm going to take fall on my own hands. He creates a plot. And then, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, he says, in order for my life to mean something, I'm going to take my own life out as well. Those are like the, the overhead facts. The thing that hit me the most is when the leaked memo was, was leaked to the public, whether you want to blame it on press or whoever you want to, I think more people focused on okay this huge you actually brought it up you were mm -hmm. the first one to bring it up when we were mm -hmm. talking this huge monumental case is going to be overturned based on a brief right mm -hmm. i thought at the time the bigger issue was the leak that's i, I agree you know i'm I like agree. wow that leak seems huge you and can't it, trust it you can't and it was overlooked because it was it, it was clearly i mm -hmm. think they they agreed that it was a legitimate document but it was a leak so nothing had been in paper one of the things i don't think we talked about and i'll be honest i don't even know if i thought about 
is literally the protection and the danger that that mm -hmm. leak could cause towards Supreme Court justices. Well, they instantly started rioting in front of their homes. Yes, exactly. This is a carry-on of exactly what did, Kyle did, said. Did the speaker, didn't Schumer also say there'll be something to pay for this? You know, oh, absolutely. As far as the case overturned yes. itself without looking, mm -hmm. I, I agree. This is, this is scary. I mean, I think in not just the law profession, in all of our professions, we understand mm -hmm. the Supreme Court is the supreme law of the land. You know, they're they're making laws. Um, and you would hope they'd have are, some integrity to hold a confidential hearing. Oh, my gosh. You know, I, I think, and I'm not trying to misstate anything, but when this came out, it said it was the first time a, a, a brief mm -hmm. was ever leaked yeah. in the history. Think about what it's cost. Kyle's right. That if we go back just a month or two, and whenever this came out, they were already outside some of mm -hmm. these these Supreme Court justices' homes. They're marching outside, which is like you know an unprecedented thing. And now for this guy to be able to fly across the country, be able to have it, and, and the stuff that he had on him, this was a well thought out. He had what zip ties. Oh, he had yeah. a gun. He had all of these burglary tools to get inside. It, it, it's frightening. I, I guess the issue I'll pose before you is, okay, we know leaking's bad. Uh, and and that ha can't happen anymore. What do we do to protect our judges? What do we do to protect that area of law and order? Because this stuff's going to happen in the future, mm -hmm. at some it's, point. Go ahead. I, I'll just. I have a couple. Of, I have two comments really, but I'll, I'll say you know, one. I, can I say this, Kyle? I was impressed that you leaked it first. Oh right. On our we show. Were yeah. it. On we our were, show. Yes. <laughs> no, we were getting, we were preparing for a show. I, know, I believe. Yeah. I know. yeah, that was impressive. So here here's I just, how I think you solve that. So is that you need a leader of a free world called the president who comes in and says, "Listen, country, they're doing their job. It is nothing is final, right? They are observing and making a decision that which has not been made yet. Let's not be irrational and start threatening people. Uh, you haven't seen that. Leadership. No, agreed. Listen, leadership helps. Yeah, it yeah. would be nice for anyone to come out in these crazy times. What, right. it, regardless of which side we're on, we have always are historically held mm -hmm. our president in high esteem. We need to unite big, our country yeah, to unite us. We we need a, a big leader. We could have had one a couple mm -hmm. weeks ago with when I don't even know how long Gibalde hit. We need someone that's going to step up. And I'm not trying to honestly place blame. I think Kyle makes a very good point. Someone that steps up in the middle of all this drama that speaks to everyone mm -hmm. and sells what he's speaking. Mm -hmm. Instead it, of these individuals are going to turn back the clock. All you're doing is saying, hey, these are horrible mm -hmm. people. Someone needs to take care of them. Yes. We all, the world needs Jesus. The world, mm -hmm. does, you know, <laughs> yep. let me add on to that. Yeah. Go ahead. That's no, always okay, going to be mine, always gonna be mine guys. You mine know that. Come, all, my comment is coming off of that. <clears throat> and so... The problem is in this, Mike, you and I were actually talking mm -hmm. about this. I think we heard it from the, uh, heard it, put it like this. And it was said that the problem is not that you need to be told that you can or can not abort a child. The problem is that mothers are wanting to kill their children. That's the problem. Well, it's, it's all yeah. that starts in the heart. Yeah. You know, that's what I was, yeah, you know, you know, um, I think you sent us the, 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 the sermon. And what I liked is, if if I want to kill my wife Tiffany, there's a bigger problem here yes. than the, than that than the than, act itself. Yes, right. I mean there's something that's starting in me way back. You know, and I and I, I the art of war talks about how the mind is the weapon, mm. yes. the arms and the feet are just extensions of the mind. Right. Yeah, you know, you're so, saying the only reason you don't kill your wife shouldn't be because it's illegal. No, <laughs> it's because you just shouldn't do that. Yeah, I mean, yeah. there's got to be more to that one yeah. than just that. But, and I think you brought this up a, a few shows ago. When we get to where we're at now, one of the reasons you can look back 20 years, mm -hmm. see that decisions that were made and there's this slow moral decay. And you, I think you even said, and if we want to look forward 20 years, we're going to have to make decisions now looking sure. at that. I can't agree more. Going back to the mind, we have allowed so many more freedoms, mm -hmm. or we have turned our back on issues we knew were big. Yeah, this is what the expectancy is over a twenty-year period when we don't love our kids, or we choose to give them this or this from government without any work. Yeah. It, it, there's been a long moral decay of this, and well, I think mm -hmm. we're just seeing it play out into these big screen areas like the Supreme Court. Well, well, I, well, I, I think this, and I was talking to uh, Josh Vietti the other day. I think as a church. We have to take responsibility to offer parenting classes. 
right. oh, we good. have to yeah. we we have to offer just um uh, um how to how to be a good husband how to sure. be a good wife how to be a good citizen yeah. how to be responsible we have to be able to do this while we're keeping up with our social services too mm -hmm. supporting the homeless supporting um you know a, a addiction recovery right. supporting being chaplains for the uh, uh, correctional department you have to pick that up because those are real those are realities right. mm -hmm. and we have Absolutely. to we have to realize our responsibility within that society as a church is that i think the church needs to step up too all right well hey do you have anything else to add i want to ask you a tough question okay where do you fall online more and i and i'm not saying they're both not important do you think the focus is the decision being made or do you think that the focus should be the fact that the supreme court had a document leaked because you're in the business yeah, and, and probably this has a lot to do with my own belief system sure i think the document leak was gigantic because it, it opened up so many doors that we're dealing with now that we didn't think about uh -huh. i think the public as a whole yeah was more concerned with the story you know and and you know that's just unfortunate but that's just i'm probably against the tide here i'm with you on that yeah i remember yeah, telling I, I my probably wife imagine you were the you same know what? Oh, yeah. the night we had that meeting when you mentioned that i went home and i started reading i told my wife said you know what this is going to be gigantic i said but the leak is going to be much it, just as mm -hmm. usual i was wrong but i'm like this is going to be a huge story I thought the leak was huge. I thought it told a lot. And not just about the story, but about all the back workings and how political and divisive now that area of Supreme Court, which it had never been. Mm -hmm. it, it's just, it, it's a, you know, it's just a, a walking embodiment of where we're at as a society. Well, I, I think it's simple because they want to, people, certain people, right. certain groups of people want to control the narrative. And the, the leak doesn't coincide with the narrative that wants to be told and the decision being made does well can i jump yeah. in too I because i think everybody wants to control a narrative mm -hmm. yeah. right right you know and and that's where i think you know um uh, my job as clergy is i love people mm -hmm. i love uh what goes on with people's lives and that's what i want to have conversation mm -hmm. i think we should be open to each other's opinions whether we think they're right or they're wrong, at least be able to discuss them. Right. You know, because I think human beings generally, you know, this is this is where I'm always going to be. You know, I, I just see God's redemptive power. Mm -hmm. And I've seen it work in my life. I've seen it work in your guys' Absolutely. life. I've seen it work in others' lives. Right. I just think that's one of the things that we have to bring back in yeah. somehow. Now, I don't have the answer to do that, but I have. Well, I, I agree with that. Um and absolutely love conversation having the conversation however i think that just the fact of a lot of us as christians have stayed quiet on a lot of these issues for far too long has allowed the the things yeah. that are going on now to happen and my brother's a pastor and so i i used to give him a very hard time i'm like you need to stand up against this you need to and, it, and he'd always go well kyle I serve Jesus yeah. and that is it. And I go, but people follow you and there is a balance and yeah, there yeah, is a line. Mm -hmm. And you know, I'm like, well, you can serve Jesus comma a, B and C yeah. and, but you know, we're, tr he's trying to unite people and I understand your take and right. I understand yours. Well, and I wasn't saying that yeah. Tom's wrong for that right. either. No, no, I'm just, it's, and, and, it's and, good. I, and it's I'm both. good. I, I'm, I'm, I will say I'm not always right. Right. You know? And no. so, <laughs> well, we need leaders. We need leaders. We, yeah. And, and we need mm -hmm. people that will stand up and take a stand. Well, listen, we're too. going beyond relevant rants right now. Yeah, yeah. We, we need to wrap talking. this up. So yeah. listen from Tom, Mike, Kyle, and myself, thank you for joining us for relevant rants. We'll be back next week and can't wait to share more information.